Greetings, folks, and welcome to today's show. We want to talk about education standards, uh, regardless of what they're called. It's a very, very important uh, subject, and uh, one that unfortunately has sort of gotten uh, tangled up in, in politics almost more than substance. And the uh, Common Core Standards we began to implement in 2010, 2010, almost five years ago. And uh, now we've, uh, we've got uh, some element of the legislature, I'm not sure how strong, that would really like to abandon those standards. And uh, our mission here today is to try to uh, discuss this uh, on, a, on a kind of a philosophical level, if you will. And uh, in other words, what, what should be done regardless of the politics. And uh, my guest today is uh, Dr. Dan Lawson, who, as you know, is the uh, director of uh, Tullahoma School System. Uh, but I have asked uh, Dr. Lawson to come on today, not representing the Tullahoma School District as such, but uh, to uh, be a resource to try to discuss this thing in some sort of objective manner. So that's what we hope to do. And uh, I don't know, can we succeed? Do you spoke, Dr. Lawson? I, I think we can leave today with a better understanding of the vocabulary, the program, the intent, and, and hopefully just better understand the dialogue that's taking place nationally. And maybe even find a way to go. Uh, okay, let's take a short commercial break, folks, and we'll come back and have at it. You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. Let the smokehouse be your mountain getaway destination in beautiful Monteagle, Tennessee. Enjoy our cabins, restaurant, and old general store. Shop the smokehouse.com featuring homemade barbecue sauces, jellies, and many other fine Tennessee products. Our live Music on the Mountain series features some of the best local and Nashville talent every Friday and Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. No cover, kids welcome. We're talking today, folks, uh, with uh, Dr. Dan Lawson, and our subject is education standards. Uh, very hot, very important uh, subject for us, as I, I hope we can develop. Uh, Dr. Lawson, I'd like to begin by uh, see if I can establish a couple of levels uh, of uh, interest in this uh, subject. The business world, uh, is increasingly telling us that with the increasing technical uh, environment that we're going to continue to live in, that we are not giving them qualified students. We hear, we hear a couple <coughs> of complaints as, as we talk to the business world in general. Uh, those complaints will include uh, suggestions that the rigor of our curriculum, the difficulty, if you will, is not great enough. Uh, there will be suggestions that there's not a portability between the task that we have kids doing in schools and the task that they're expected to do in, in the workplace, whether that's a, a writing assignment in the workplace or, or conducting calculations in the workplace. They're having difficulty in seeing that, that they can connect the skill that they acquired in school to the skill that's necessary, that's necessary in the workplace. In the workplace. Okay. So those, those couple of things are are things that we hear locally, things that we hear in the state, and things that we certainly hear nationally. Okay. Now, uh, along the same line, uh, is it fair to say that the, uh, is there in the education community broadly, is there uh, an agreement that uh, our standards really need to be raised? Yeah, I, I can address that by saying this. I've, I've, in my fourth decade as an educator, 
And in each of those decades, I was held to a set of standards, a set of academic expectations that I was expected to teach or lead others to teach. Standards aren't new for educators. Standards aren't a new discussion or a new dialogue. And standards are dynamic. They ought to change as our needs and expectations and what we face as a, a society changes. So it's certainly- Always a work in progress. Absolutely. Yeah. There will never be a set of standards that are exhaustive and do everything we want to do. They ought to be Forever. dynamic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Uh, well, then, uh, the, uh, quite a few years ago, the national assessment test was, uh, was laid on. Uh, fortunately, I guess there's no, it's not mandatory, it's not, everybody doesn't have to do it, but at least it was laid on and the results of that were broad enough to say that, uh, that nationally, locally, nationally, uh, we had left, had a lot to be desired. We were not uh, really up to snuff. Uh, and I think that's true in, in Tennessee that uh, we, we recognized quite a few years ago that we had to raise our standards. Right. And indeed, uh, there was a serious effort uh, undertaken to do that. Uh, beginning when? And has is that, is that achieved a fair amount of success up, up to now? The um, National Governing Board is a product of the, the United States Congress. And what they wanted to measure is whether or not the investment made by Congress in public education was meeting their expectation. So there was no set of standards, but there was an assessment, a test. That test has been given for several decades now to a random set of students, not universally administered, but a random set of students in each state. As we saw that our achievement on that assessment wasn't as high as we would like to see, we did see changes in the state of Tennessee. In fact, Governor Bredesen looked at our TCAP measure, which said that we had a, a pretty high number of, of students who were proficient and advanced, and he compared that to the NAEP Nation's Report Card, and he saw there was a great incongruence, and his comments were, we really have to step that up. In the state of Tennessee, we implemented what were called the, uh, the Tennessee uh, Diploma Standards. Those Tennessee Diploma Standards were implemented in the, the mid-2000s and were fully implemented by about 2008. So most teachers that you talk to, especially secondary and middle school level, will think about those Tennessee Diploma Standard standards that they had taught to and were measured against because there was a good alignment between that set of standards and our TCAP assessment, the test to be given. When we roll forward, that's when we start to have a, a lot of confusion, a lot of concern, um, that we have an expression of this is a challenge. And we rolled forward by saying... With the introduction of Common Core? Absolutely. Yes, okay. That's, uh, yes. So, again, the, uh, the Common Core standards uh, came in in 2010. We began to uh, have a requirement to implement those. And as you're saying, that's just two, two years after you had, had already uh, arrived at the, at the uh, state standards that uh, were considerably improved. So, uh, and the Common Core Standards uh, were developed by the Governor's Conference. They are frequently characterized as being federal, <clears throat> but they're not federal except in the sense that the, the feds encouraged us to adopt them. They didn't actually write the standards. Uh, National Governors uh, Association is, in fact, the, the authoring body for Common Core. Um, and about 46 states signed on and said, this is a good idea. Let's have a common set of standards that are portable from state to state. Let's make sure that what we teach in Spokane, Washington, is consistent with what's in Tallahassee, Florida, and Tullahoma, Tennessee. So 46 states signed on to those standards and accepted the idea that here are a good set of standards, now let's develop an assessment. So there were two consortia that developed, two groups that said, we're going to build an assessment. 
One of those groups was called Smarter Balanced. The other was called the Partnership for Readiness in College and Careers, or PARC. Those two consortia grabbed nearly all of those 46 states to become partner members in that group with an intent of developing a test to measure how well states do on a commonly adopted set of standards. Okay, and uh, that was just being implemented, but uh, hadn't actually taken place long enough for us to tell whether it was going to work or not, it sounds like. In fact, the level yeah. that, uh, that basically we hit our impasse was a level that had the, the standards in place, the standards shared, many teachers trained on those standards and prepared to teach with those standards, but we didn't have development and implementation of the assessment. So we had the, what we're going to measure articulated and shared to the teachers, but we hadn't affected the measurement yet. And uh, that became of, uh, quite a concern to them because uh, at the same time, we imposed a requirement that 35% uh, of their, their evaluation, their performance evaluation was going to be based on student outcomes when we had this uh, mixture of uh, what, uh, what was uh, going to be taught. And Tom, that was especially problematic <coughs> when I, th I think about putting myself in the shoes of, of that teacher. I know what the standards are. I know that the assessment has a record of being aligned with those standards. So I've got some, some belief in predictability or what statisticians call validity and reliability of that assessment. But if I'm in a situation where I don't know what the assessment is, I've never seen it, it's a brand new experience, and I've tied 35% of, of the assessment of the work that I do to an unknown assessment, it becomes uh, pretty concerning. Yeah, I, uh, and rightly so. I, I don't fault the, uh, the teachers for feeling that. They weren't too happy about having 35% of it developed. Absolutely. Student, even if they could tell, rely on what the uh, outcome was. Uh, let me ask you this, was, was the, the Common Core in relation to the Tennessee standards that uh, you'd already developed and implemented, was there a, a sea change difference between these two or are we sort of looking yeah, it's a great Somewhat question. A common set of uh, standards. One of the, uh, I was in, in a position of, of some leadership at the state level at that time with the Superintendents Association. So one of the first questions we raised was, why in the world are we dumping one set of standards that we believe are going to better align with NAEP, better align with the expectations of, of the collegiate setting and of, of folks in the workplace, and go to something that we don't know anything about. And the response from the state was about 90% of what you're doing on Tennessee Diploma Plan is going to align with New Common Core in reading language art. And about 80% is going to align with what you're doing in math. So we left with the belief that we've got to retrofit 10% of one area and 20% of, of another area, which is not monumental, which is certainly doable. And we left with a belief that that's our charge. Let's update our Tennessee Diploma Plan to align with Common Core, to affect the Common Core uh, standards as implemented, and let's make that happen. Well, meanwhile then, the, uh, the test had uh, not quite gotten off the ground, and uh, now comes the legislature, and uh, we want to talk some more about them, folks, but uh, we need to uh, take a short commercial break and we'll come back. At the time, maybe you were just building a bridge, a business, or a community. Maybe you were simply working for a home or a better tomorrow. At the time, you served out of duty and love of country. But in that time, we see a legacy created, an American dream lived. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. 
The Russell Barnett Automotive family would like to wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. For the past 34 years, we've proudly served you in the new and pre-owned automotive industry. We look forward to serving you many years to come. We have over a thousand vehicles to choose from at RussellBarnett.com. That's Russell Barnett Crosser Dodge Jeep Ram, Chevrolet GMC and Ford of Winchester, and Russell Barnett Ford and Kia of Tullahoma. That's RussellBarnett.com. And remember, why buy anywhere else? I'm meteorologist Leland Statham from the News Channel 5 Weather Center. Look to Jim Fuller and crew for local news night here on Channel 6. We're back, folks, and we're talking today with uh, Dr. Dan Lawson, and uh, we're trying to uh, make as much sense as we can uh, out of the uh, situation we're dealing with in the state having to do with education standards whether they're common core or something else. Uh, and we were at the point of saying that uh, <clears throat> we had the standards, I'm, I'm talking about common core now, and you had identified the, uh, the difference between the Tennessee standards and the common core, and there was a move beginning to develop to try to close that gap. You had a test developed called PARC, at least uh, one of them was called PARC, that was designed to, uh, to measure against the Common Core. Uh, however, it, it had just barely gotten started when, lo and behold, last year the legislature put it on hold and set it aside, said you can't implement it for at least a year, right. another year. Uh, I've, I've yet to hear why that, why that was done. Uh, is there some practical reason that I've missed uh, or did this turn out to be a political maneuver? Let you me don't have to call it a political maneuver. <laughs> the question is, from your, where you sat, was there a practical reason for setting that aside? I think there are, there are several reasons for setting it aside. One from a, a public policy perspective is that we were a member of a consortia uh, and an awful lot of money is, is spent on testing and assessment. If, if I am thinking only the best of those who made that decision and they tell me that it was done to assure that, that the appropriate use of public money is accomplished in an assessment, then I have to buy that. So I, I think there's a case that speaks to uh, fiscal prudence associated with spending this kind of money on an assessment. There's a case that speaks to the fact that... But the assessment was already developed. It was in process, yes, yes. Okay. But it, it needed to be purchased, and there are bidding components associated uh -huh. with purchasing. Yes. So okay. I, I think there are some folks who could make a, a pretty compelling case that if we're going to spend millions of dollars, we need to bid that. And I understand that, and I, I, give, them, I, I give them certainly their credit if that's their belief. Um, there's also a great deal of concern that members of the General Assembly heard about a number of changes. You just hit on one of, of the 35% of the, uh, the teacher's effectiveness score is based on an assessment. That's new material. That didn't take place five years ago. So we had teachers faced with a new set of standards, a new assessment, and an accountability measure that was above and beyond any expectation. So I'm sure they were expressing concerns to members of the General Assembly as to why in the world are you going to hold me accountable for a test that you've never seen? Well, another uh, option they had at the time, though, is that uh, how about until the smoke settles, if we just take the uh, evaluation, take this out of the evaluation equation, and not use student assessment until we get all this unscrambled. And, and Tom, that observation is, is uh, sage wisdom that should have been implemented much earlier. Uh, <laughs> several, several folks campaigned for just that. Uh, we understand aligning a measure of effectiveness with how folks perform on a test, but let's make sure that we're confident in the validity and reliability of that test first. Now, candidly, one of the things that uh, Governor Haslam has done in the last week has been to revisit just that issue. He's heard a, a great deal of you and cry from, from teachers, from board members, from folks like me who say, 
we understand, but let's use some common sense and let's, let's measure our progress by some knowns that we have out there. So he has proposed uh, earlier this week uh, a model that says instead of 35%, let's start off with a lesser percentage for the first year, grow it the next year, and then flesh it out to 35% three years out. Gives folks a chance to know the measure against which they're measured, gives them a chance to understand the new set of standards, and alleviates the fear of change, which is the biggest challenge that we face. Well, all right. Now, uh, meanwhile, and the reason we let this is we've been leading up to this point that I'm about to make. That meanwhile, there has developed in the legislature a fair size movement to uh, cripple or abandon Common Core. That's going to come up in the legislature. Uh, it's very important to uh, that we understand the implications of that. And uh, that really results in, uh, in another disruption to what's going on down in the classroom that's now been going on constantly. Uh, I feel sorry for the, uh, for the teachers, frankly, because we've been uh, dumping changes on them for the last uh, 10, 12 years uh, consistently. In fact, I'd like, uh, Dr. Lawson, for you to address that very question. You know, all this stuff that keeps going on and now we might abandon something we started using four years ago. What, what impact is this having in the classroom? I, I hope the, the impact that it's having is mitigated a lot by effective leaders who see the stress, who see the challenge and say, do what's right by kids and do your job to the best of your ability and align with the expectations and the standards that we have here. I, I know personally, I've, uh, I've embraced a, a quite different role in the last couple of years, and rather than pushing for a lot of change and really uh, trying to stretch things, I've, I've adopted much more of a role of a chief morale officer because there's an awful lot of, of our teachers who feel nothing but stress and consternation, nothing but a lack of confidence as about to what's to come next, and nothing but a, a belief that uh, the general public believes they're not doing a good job. Gallup and others will will share data that they have provided that says teachers in the classroom still have far and away a great deal of confidence uh, of, of their communities that they serve, of the parents that they deal with, and of the kids that they teach. I, I think it's real easy to lose that and forget about that when we get caught up with, with what's going on in, in Nashville and what's going on in Washington, D.C. We have had standards and we will have standards. And my task on a daily basis is to let folks know that we are training the next generation of learners and leaders, train them to do things right and to behave right and be young men and women of character, competence, and chemistry. And that's really what we focused on. Well, I, I appreciate that. Uh, and as you say, good leadership, you know, trying to mitigate the impact that's uh, in the classroom, but nevertheless, it's there. Absolutely. And I, uh, you know, I wonder uh, how, many, how many people that are out there that might be considering education as a, as a field are really these days uh, inclined to have some serious thoughts of, about the uh, just from the standpoint of the work environment right. that they wind up with. Well, uh, let's take on the impossible here for a minute, and uh, we only got a couple of minutes left to go. What's a sensible way out? How do we get out of this mess? We embrace the idea that um, schools are about teaching something. They're not about teaching whatever uh, several thousand teachers want to teach in their isolated area. They're about teaching things that enhance our culture, that enhance our civilization, that enhance our society, that enhance people individually. Um, so we have a, an important critical task that we embrace and there ought to be things that society shares that are needs for our community that we embrace and adopt and, and make our standards uh, make our standards very much dynamic to address. I think, however, we've got to be accepting 
of the fact that there's diversity. There's diversity that says any standard is bad. Well, hey, we, but nuts and bolts. Yes. Given where we are politically and otherwise, you know, are there some basic steps that we need to take, uh, that we could take, just to sort of calm the playing field and start toward uh, developing a, a sensible approach that most of us can agree I think with. Governor Haslam did a very bright thing when he put the standards online along with a website that said, if you've got a problem with standards, don't talk to me about concept, talk to me about specific standards that you have a problem with. Precisely. And so I, th I think that the idea of soliciting that feedback and addressing those particular areas was an invaluable, uh, very astute move that should have been should have taken place much earlier, but will serve us well now as we transition. And now combined with his reducing the amount of the eval teacher evaluation that goes on those scores, those those two combinations are really uh, pretty significant. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, folks, guess what? We've run out of time, and uh, we're going to have to take a short commercial break and wrap up. strive for it every day. We fight to get people the best access to care and the chance for more parties to plan. We're the American Cancer Society. Help create a world with more birthdays at morebirthdays.com. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. We've been talking today, folks, uh, with uh, Dr. Dan Lawson. The subject has been education standards, and uh, because of the label Common Core, uh, there's now an awful lot of controversy uh, going on on the subject, and the legislature is threatening to uh, eliminate Common Core or cripple it uh, when the session begins. Uh, that's a, a critically important uh, undertaking and one you should be interested in because uh, we just keep changing things and throwing it around and there's this is a subject that is not really political in nature. Uh, this has to do with the way our kids are being taught and what they're being taught and whether they're being prepared for uh, uh, life is, uh, in, after school uh, is out. So. I hope we've been able to uh, uh, establish some understanding on, uh, on your part that we need to settle down now, accept a set of standards, take the step to get a test to measure against those standards, and meanwhile, don't measure the teachers against uh, something that they, uh, they really have no control over. So with that, uh, we need to uh, thank Dr. Lawson for uh, being with us today. He's been our, our philosopher. And, um, and I wish to thank you folks for uh, inviting us into your parlor, and we'll see you next time.